Namaste, beautiful yogis. Welcome to your strong shoulders and back practice. The only pop you'll need for today is a block. And if you don't have a block, you could use anything that has weight to it. So maybe you have some dumbbells laying around, some kettlebells. If not, um, a very heavy book could do as well, or a water bottle or even a shoe box that has some stuff in there so that it weighs a little bit extra. You can put this to the side for now. Also, today's practice is going to be quite intense. So if you're a very, very, very beginner, you've just started your yoga practice, maybe go and click some other videos to get started first. And once you've built up the strength and a bit of the knowledge about the poses, then revisit this practice. All right, we'll get started. You can come to your child's pose, Velasana. So walk towards the back of your mat, bring your big toes together, you're sitting onto your heels. And then depending on how your low back feels today, you have two different options. If your low back hurts a little bit, you want some extra support, you keep your knees together. If your low back feels fine and you wanna be able to go deeper into the hips, you just bring the knees apart. I would say about the width of your mat. From here, walk the hands away from you, bring your chest down towards your mat and then if your forehead allows you to rest it down onto the floor we'll start by taking a few deep grounding breaths here so see if you can gently start to deepen your breath with every inhale see if you can find a little bit more space in the spine allowing it to grow taller and every exhale, allow the lower body to become heavier. So allow your legs to melt down into the floor. Soften the muscles of your hips. Three more deep breaths. Last two. And on your next inhale, walk the hands back towards you. If your knees were apart, bring them back together. From here on the inhale, reach the arms overhead, interlace your fingers except for your first and your second finger. So you're making what they call a yogic peaceful gun. Now here on the inhale, next inhale, see if you can lengthen a little bit more, allow your back to open here. So round, or I should say hollow the back, allow your chest to open. On the exhale, round the back. So tuck the hips under, bring your hands out in front of your heart. Interlace all fingers now and then press the palms away from you. Tuck your chin into your chest. We'll start moving with the breath. So on the inhale, you open up. You can go for a bit of a back bend here. And on the exhale, you round, making yourself into a little ball. Press the palms away from you. Tuck your chin in. Inhale, lengthen and hollow. Exhale, round. Good. Two more times. Just follow the pace of your own breath here. Last round. Good. From here, walk the hands out in front of you. Come to your tabletop position. So your wrist will be right underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. From here, start engaging your core. So pull your belly button in towards the spine and then gently lift it up towards your heart. Keep your core engaged. Take a look at your hands. Make sure your fingers are spread wide apart so there's a lot of space in between the fingers. And you want to grip your fingertips into the floor as if you're trying to grab the mat with your fingers. We're doing this to make sure that you have a good distribution of the weight over the whole hand rather than dumping all the way into the wrist, which could end up hurting your wrist. All right, check that your core is still engaged. On your next inhale, extend your right leg straight behind you. Engage your inner thighs to make sure that your right hip is not rolling open. So the idea here is not to bring your leg as high as you can. You don't wanna do this. You wanna make sure your hips stay squared. So your toes, right toes are pointing straight down. From here, extend your left arm forward. Bit of a balancing exercise here. Very good to warm up the core. See so if you can lift 
Throw your right armpit up away from the floor. One more breath cycle. On the exhale, bring your left hand back down underneath your left shoulder. Step the right foot back behind the left foot here. And then on the inhale, open your right arm up towards the ceiling. A little modified side plank. Imagine that you have a wall behind you here and you're trying to press both shoulders against the wall. So you're nicely opening the chest. Make sure your core stays engaged. Again, keep lifting here from the left armpit up away from your mat. Last inhale. Exhale, bring it back down. Bring the right knee back underneath the right hip. Check your core, make sure it's engaged. Check your fingers here, make sure they're gripping. And then on the inhale, extend your left leg back. Again, keeping the hips squared. And then reach your right hand forward. See if you can lengthen from your right fingertips all the way towards your left toes. Two more breaths. Again, pushing away from the floor here with your left hand, lifting from the armpit. All right, next exhale, bring your right hand back down. Step your left foot behind the right one and then reach your left arm up. Make sure you're gripping your right fingertips into the floor. Open the chest, core stays engaged. Keep lifting from the right armpit up. One more deep breath in. And exhale, bring it back down. Really good. From here, walk your hands about one palm forward. Bring your knees off of the floor and come to your high plank. Again, checking your fingers. Make sure you have a lot of space in between each finger. Press your fingertips into the floor. See if you can broaden the collarbones while lifting from the armpits. Of course, stays engaged. Two more breaths. Last inhale. Exhale, press your hips back, come to your downward dog. Feel free to pedal the feet here, especially if it's early in the day and you haven't done much movement yet today. You could even pivot over to the feet, bring the heels from side to side, move with the hips to bring the stretch more into the side of the body. And then gently come to stillness. Take one more deep breath in now, it's a new downward dog. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees, take little steps towards the front of your mat. Bring the feet, hips distance apart, exhale, bend over. Take hold of opposite elbows, and as long as it feels good for the low back, gently sway from side to side. All right, next inhale, come to halfway lift, extend the spine forward. And you can decide here where you put your hands, either onto the upper thighs, the shin bones, or fingertips onto the floor. You just want to make sure your spine stays long and straight. Exhale, bend over again. Inhale, roll all the way up, reach the arms overhead, press the feet firmly down. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. One round of sun salutations. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold over with a straight back. And then at the end, around the back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step both feet back, come to your plank position. Take one nice deep breath in. On the exhale, you shift the weight forward and you come as slowly as you can down to the floor. Option to bring your knees down. Keep the elbows close to the body. Untuck your toes. Inhale, just lift your chest and your shoulders, baby cobra. Press through all 10 toes. And then tuck the toes under. Exhale, downward dog. Good. Two breaths in your downward dog. Make sure your hands are shoulder width apart. Press the upper arms together towards one another. And then at the same time, spread your shoulder blades apart so the shoulders come wide. Press your chest back. On your next inhale, walk the feet together. Lift the right leg up, coming to a three-legged dog. Just as... In the exercise that we did at the beginning of the practice, you keep your toes pointing straight down. So don't allow this right hip to open up. Keep your hips squared. Keep pressing your chest back towards the left knee, lengthening from the spine. 
On the exhale, look forward, bring the right knee to your chest, step the right foot in between the hands, step your left heel down onto the floor at a 45 degree angle. We're coming into a warrior one, Fear Bhadrasana A. Again, making sure your back foot is at a diagonal, looking forward, come deeper through the front knee, and then press your right hip back, left hip rolls forward. From here, take your block in between both hands, inhale, reach up, come to warrior one with a block between the hands, just to give a little bit more weight for the shoulders to carry here. So again, the idea here is to square your hips uh, in regards to the front of the mat, so you press right hip back, left hip rolls forward, Make sure from the moment that you roll this left hip forward that you're not putting extra weight on the inside of the foot. So keep pressing through the outside edge of the foot. You guys still have the block lifted up here. Make sure your core is engaged. So you can imagine pulling the fronts of the hips up towards the lower rib cage. Maybe come a little bit deeper. On the exhale, come halfway down at about a 45 degree angle with the upper body. You could decide how difficult you make it for your arms. You could either just press the block in between the hands or to make it easier, curl your fingertips around the block. Two more breaths. Keep engaging your core, lifting it away from the upper thigh. And exhale, place your block down, step the right foot back, come towards your plank position. Deep breath in. Exhale, shift the weight forward, come all the way down. Again, move your first through the knees, untuck your toes. Inhale, baby cobra or full cobra, we're pressing more into the hands. Keep your elbows bent, shoulders stay back. Exhale, downward dog. Step your feet together. All right, next inhale, lift your left leg straight up, three-legged dog, press your upper body back towards the back wall. You're going to keep spreading the shoulder blades while pressing the upper arms together. All right, next exhale, look forward, bring the left knee into your chest, roll forward, and step the left foot forward. Bring the right heel onto the mat, 45 degrees, take hold of your block. From here, Bring your attention to your left leg here. Make sure you're pressing the left hip back. Your right hip will move forward. From here, block between the hands. Inhale, lift up. Core stays engaged. Where you win. Firbhadrasana A. Again, making sure that you're pressing firmly through the outside edge of the back foot as you're rolling the right hip forward. Good. Two more breaths. Maybe come a little bit deeper through the front thigh. On the exhale, come halfway down. 45 degrees. Three breaths in total. Imagine that you could pull your heels together towards one another. This will give you a bit more stability. Last inhale. Exhale, put your block to the side. Step the left foot back. Come to your plank. Take another deep breath in. Make sure you're spreading your fingers here. Exhale, shift the weight forward. Come all the way down to the floor. Untuck your toes. Inhale, baby cobra, option one. Option two, full cobra, or option three, upper dog. Lifting the hips and the upper thighs off of the floor. Round your shoulders back. Exhale, downward dog. This time we're gonna stay in down dog for a few breaths. Will give us the time to go over the full alignment of the pose. So look forward towards your hands. Again, checking that your hands are shoulder width apart. Really spread your fingers wide. Press the fingertips into the floor. And then allow your head to hang heavy. No tension in the neck. No tension in the head. You should be able to easily move your head from side to side here. Left to right. Back and forward. So the head is hanging heavy. From here, press your chest back towards your knees. Press the upper arms together. Spread the shoulder blades. Core is engaged. And then imagine that you could pull your lower ribs into the body. Press the backs of the thighs back towards the wall behind you. 
You always have the option to bend the knees here. But if you can, press the heels down towards the floor. Feet are hips distance apart. Feel your shoulders starting to shake by now. <laughs> and then the last little detail here, make sure that the outer edges of your feet are parallel to the outer edges of the mat. This means that you'll very slightly um, pull the heels out to the side. Your next inhale, look forward. Bring both elbows down to the floor, coming to dolphin. You could do one elbow down at a time. Walk the elbows in so that they're shoulder width. Interlace your fingers. And then bring your head through the arms. Press your chest back. So you're basically in a downward dog, but just with your elbows down onto the floor. Keep pressing the backs of the hips back. So where's the wall behind you? On the inhale, look forward. Exhale, bring your nose down to your thumbs. Shift the weight forward. And then inhale, bring it back. Exhale, nose to thumbs. Inhale, back. Three more. Exhale, nose to thumbs. Inhale, back. Exhale. Inhale. Last one. Exhale. Inhale. Good. From here, look forward again. Walk your feet back to a low plank. If you're all the way at the back of the mat like I am, just walk the elbows a bit forward. Good. We're in a forearm plank. Take another deep breath in. On the exhale, walk the feet back in towards a dolphin. Inhale, walk it back to plank. Exhale, dolphin. Inhale, plank. Again, just moving with the breath. Keep pressing the upper arms in towards one another. Don't allow the elbows to splay out to the side. Exhale in. Inhale out. One more time. Exhale, walk the feet in. Press your chest back. Last time. Inhale, walk it back. Good. From here, bring your hips down. Bring the arms, the forearms parallel to one another. Open the chest. So press your chest through the arms forward, coming to the Sphinx pose. If you have a good back bend practice and you feel quite ready in the spine, you could come up to a seal pose option too. So just lifting the elbows away from the floor. This will bring you deeper into your back bend. If you are here and this feels too much for you, you can maybe first walk the hands away from you a little bit more, see how that feels. If that still doesn't feel good, come back to your Sphinx pose. Or if you are in your seal and you don't feel a lot, you want to go deeper, walk the hands closer towards you. So you can modify the practice here to suit your body. We're just taking a little break. Last deep breath in. Exhale, bring your elbows back down. Interlace your fingers again. Check to make sure that your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Tuck your toes under. Come back to a forearm plank. Make sure you're pressing from the armpits up while at the same time broadening from the collarbones. So you're opening the chest. On the exhale, you bring your hips off to the right side. So you pivot over the feet, but both elbows stay down. Inhale, middle. Exhale to the left. Inhale, middle. Exhale, right. Inhale, middle. Exhale, left. Inhale, middle. Good. Three more on each side. Move with your own breath. So inhale is at the middle. Exhale is either to the right or to the left side. Inhale, middle. Exhale, right. Middle. Exhale, left. One more on each side. Good. Come back to the middle. Untuck your hands or uncross your hands. Come over to the right side of the body, coming into a side plank. You have different options with the feet. Either you keep the feet in line. Option one. Option two. Bring the legs together. Reach your left arm up towards the sky. Keep lifting from the right armpit up. Keep spreading your fingers here. This will help you with balance. Press through the fingertips down. One more deep breath in. Exhale, shift over to the other side, left side. 
Again, either feet in line, option one, option two, legs together. Press from the left armpit up, and then press your left shoulder blade into the body. Last deep breath in. And exhale, bring it back down. Bring the hips down, come to your sphinx. Option one, if you wanna take it further. Option two, seal pose. Again, you could play around with the positioning of your hands. If you walk the hands further away from you, you're coming a little bit out of the back bend. If you wanna go deeper into the back bend, you just walk the hands towards you. Find a place that feels good to you. Last inhale, exhale, bring it down. From here, extend your left arm out sideways. Your hand is in line with your shoulder. Roll onto the left hip, and then you have different options with this right leg. So option one is to bring the right knee out next to you. So the knee is onto the floor here, option one. Option two, both legs together. Option three, step the right foot behind you. So you'll slightly open the hips towards the ceiling and you'll notice that option three will bring about the biggest stretch here in the left shoulder. Make sure that your head is resting onto the floor comfortably. You should feel a good opening at the front of the left shoulder. Two more deep breaths. If you've lost connection with your breath throughout the practice, this is the ideal place to reconnect. All right, next inhale, roll back onto your belly. Switch over to the other side. So extend your right arm out. Make sure your hand is in line with the shoulder. Roll onto the right shoulder. Option one is to have your right knee out in front of you. Option two, both legs together. Option three, step the right foot, or sorry, the left foot, I should say, behind you. You're gonna adjust the positioning of your legs until you notice that you feel a comfortable stretch at the front of the right shoulder. Last two deep breaths. From here, roll back onto your belly. Roll onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest. Give them a good squeeze in. One more deep inhale. Exhale, take hold of the backs of the thighs and roll up to seated position. That was it, guys. It was quite intense, but quick. I hope you survived it. <laughs> I look forward to see you guys in the next practice next week. Uh, feel free to leave any recommendations that you guys would like to see in the future classes. I already have a few recommendations through Instagram, so I have a little list to uh, draw inspiration from. But if there is a certain practice that you would like to see, then definitely let me know. All right, guys, see you in the next practice. Namaste.